Hello, people. Uh, uh, this is my second time of going online, so I'm not going to really be ready to, uh, to interact as much, but uh, I just feel I need to spend some uh, few minutes before I go to sleep tonight. I have not done my book reading for some time, and I tend to do live shows by doing some book readings, books that have changed my life, that is still changing my life. And so if you happen to key in, just, just stay there. I don't know what to do for now. And uh, I'm trying to study the platform. Uh, by and by, I'll be able to interact more with you. But if you are around, you want to participate in this, feel free to join me in exploring uh, this book uh, as a man think it. I was able to read uh, some portions, my last uh, live play. And uh, today, I want to go for some time to also look at this book and discuss it and uh, probably do some snippet thereabouts to share with uh, my community. This book has changed my life personally and it's still changing my life as a man thinker because I believe that uh, once you are able to master this concept of as a man thinker, so you are, so he is, you able to master this particular concept about life. Uh, you live a very beautiful life, a life of happiness, a life of joy, because you put everything back to yourself. <laughs> you know that, look, it's not about what is happening around, it's not about what somebody is doing, it's about how am I thinking, how am I thinking, because it's what I'm thinking that determines my experience in life. So, you know, it's something to work with all your life. I mean, I, I, if, you, if I want to read myself in working with this concept, I probably, I'm still less than 10%. <laughs> and that's so, so there's a long way to go because I believe that uh, the tendency is for us to push things out there. You just believe that, oh, people out there, out there, it's out there. But it's not, it's not out there, it's always in here. It's always in here. And those are the concepts that have changed my life. And then um, it's helping me to be able to. Uh, to live a life of freedom, a life of uh, possibility, a life of growth, a life of uh, paradise, even though I'm on earth, because I now look at it that, look, nobody out there is to be blamed. Nobody out there is to be blamed. I don't even need to even blame myself. I don't need to wake up to the fact that, you know, uh, if I want to see something out there, I need to create it in here. So that is the concept of this book. And so, I've given this book to each of my children, and I know that one day uh, they will grow to, uh, to see the gem in it, and they will be able to say, oh, uh, this is a book that I need to keep around me. I have copies of it close to my, 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 my room, I have in uh, my bedroom, and I'm not tired of reading the book. So I want to start from where I stopped uh, last time. Uh, let me, I want, I'll just spend some time here. If you happen to be, to be here, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to do any, uh, any co-host or anything. If you want to join, you join and watch what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I don't, like I said, it's my second time of going on, uh, going live. I tend to do it from time to time, uh, for my book reading and uh, discussion and uh, also do seminars for, uh, my community. But this one I'm doing group reading and uh, book reading today. Uh, each of us is where we are by the law of our being. Can you hear that? Each of us is where we are by the law of our being. Each of us is where we are by the law of our being. That is loaded. I can talk on that for the next one now. Each of us is where we are by the law of our being. The more you are able to accept this concept, the more you live a happy life. Because the tendency is for you to just think that uh, uh, somebody is the reason for your unhappiness, somebody is the reason for why things are not working in your life. No, just discard those concepts and take it upon yourself that you are the law in your life. You are the law in your life. So the thoughts which we have built into our character have brought us there. Can you see that? The thought which we have built into our character has brought us there. See, everybody is a thinking machine. Everybody. We are thinking all day long, except when we are sleeping. And when we are thinking, we are creating. 
Every of our thought is karmic in nature. You see, law of karma, law of karma. Every of our thinking is karmic. So, I mean, just look at that. So, the thought which we have built into our character have brought us there. In the arrangement of our life, there is no element of chance. Every single statement in this book is something I want to talk about. Every single statement. So it's not something you can look at. He said, in the arrangement of our life, there is no element of chance. In the arrangement of our life, there is no element of chance. There are some things I'm so confident about, about the future now because of what I'm thinking today. Though it may not seem to be manifesting now, but I have this predictive understanding that by the nature of what I'm thinking now, I can foresee what's going to happen in the future. I mean, you can just imagine how beautiful that, uh, that concept is. And it's saying that in the element of our lives, there is no element of chance, but all is the result of a law which cannot err, a law which cannot go wrong. It cannot go wrong. See, this thing I'm telling you cannot go wrong. The moment you wake up to this concept that as a man thinks so is he, he cannot go wrong. He cannot go wrong. He now helps to be able to live intentionally. A lot of us live, we, just, we talk carelessly, we think carelessly, and we think that we're going to go free. In quotes, no. Everything is waiting for us, you know, up there. And then we will not get there and say, ah, why is this thing happening? But we created it by the way we think. We created it by the way we think. So, this is just as true of those who feel out of harmony with their surrounding as of those who are connected with them. As progressive and evolving beings, we are where we are, that we may learn, that we may grow. And as we learn the spiritual lesson, which any circumstance contains for us, it passes away and gives place to other circumstances. You know, whenever I arrive, whenever I get there, whenever I arrive, as we get to one point, you discover that you need a new set of thoughts to take you to the next level, whether consciously or unconsciously. So the people who are very wise, in quotes, they've learned this concept and say, look, is it for me to allow myself to be unconsciously taken to the next level? Let me take myself consciously to the next level by looking at the kind of thing I'm thinking. Because every of our thoughts is like a seed that will bear its own fruits. You cannot plant tomato and want to be looking for maize, or plant maize and want to see tomato. So every thought forms as its own way, its, its own likeness, and produces after its own kind. So I'm big, because you know that every thought you think, every thought you think, whether it's conscious or unconscious, they are coming in nature. See, if you don't, if you don't understand that simple statement, every thought you think is karmic in nature, whether you see, you are conscious of it or you are not conscious of it. So when you understand that those can, those 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 powerful concepts, then honestly, what you what you 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 want to see that oh, oh look, this life is <laughs> is a beautiful life, is a beautiful life. So. We are buffeted by circumstances so long as we believe ourselves to be the creature of outside conditions. But when we realize that we are a creative power and that we may command the hidden soil and seed of our being out of which circumstances arise, we then become the rightful masters of ourselves. Can you see the way this is being formulated? Oh, I love this book. <laughs> As a man thinking. I love this book. It, it's can't, you can't finish this kind of concept. You want to go back again and again and read it and read it and let it feed your soul. Now, that circumstance, that circumstances grow out of thought, each of us, who has for any length of time practice self-control and self-purification knows. For we will have noticed that the alteration in our circumstances has been in exact ratio with our altered mental condition. That's why you need to live a life of, you know, observation. Don't want to live carelessly. If you begin to follow me with this line of thoughts that I'm 
sharing with you now in this live play, you begin to now begin to be introspective. I look at look at look at this look at this statement. It says, it says that the circumstances grow out of thought. Each of us who has for any length of time practiced self-control and self-purification knows, for we will have noticed that the alteration in our circumstances has been in exact ratio with our altered mental condition. So true is this that when we honestly apply ourselves to remedy the defect in our character and make sweet and marked progress, we pass rapidly through a situation of vicissitudes. As this will go through some challenges because we are trying to move from one point to the other. And to move from one point to the other, you need a change in your mental, con mental condition. Your mental condition is causing your physical condition. That's what I'm talking about. Your mental condition is going to give back to your physical condition eventually. So when you look at your physical condition, it's as a result of your mental condition. Take it again. When you look at your physical condition, know that is a result of your mental condition. It's always like a mirror. Your physical condition mirrors your mental condition. Whether you like it or not, that's the truth. <laughs> your physical condition mirrors your mental condition. Your physical condition mirrors your mental condition. Write it down somewhere. Put it down somewhere where you can look at it from time to time. Your physical condition today is mirroring your mental condition right now. Think about that. So, now, the soul attracts that which is secretly above, that which it loves, and also that which it fears. It reaches the height of its cherished aspiration. It falls to the level of its busy desires, and circumstances are the means by which the soul receives its own. Every thought seed sown or allowed to fall into the mind and to take root there produces its own blossoming sooner or later into action and bearing its own harvest of opportunity and circumstance. Good thoughts bear good fruit and bad thoughts bear bad fruit. Good thoughts bear good fruit and bad thoughts bear bad fruit. So, the outer world of circumstance shapes itself to the inner world of thoughts, both pleasant and unpleasant. External conditions are factors which make for the ultimate good of the individual. As the reaper of our own harvest, we learn both by suffering and bliss. Following the innermost desires, aspirations, thoughts by which we allow ourselves to be dominated, pursuing the frivolities of impure imagining or steadily walking the highways of strong and high endeavor, we at last arrive at their future and fulfillment in the outer conditions of our lives. The law of growth and adjustment are naturally followed. One does not come to, the drunk, to drunkenness or crime by the tyranny of fate or circumstance, but by the pathway of groveling thoughts and base desires. You don't arrive at calamity by accident. That's what you're talking about. It's, that's a grave conclusion. You don't arrive at calamity just by chance. You don't arrive, and that's why you have to be very careful what to think. You don't arrive at any form of calamity by chance. You don't arrive at any form of calamity or bliss by chance. You don't arrive there. I mean, it's, this is a law-based universe. It's a law-based universe. So, now, look at that. He said, now, not does a pure-minded person fall suddenly into crime by stress of any mere external force. The criminal thought has long been secretly fostered in the heart. And the hour of opportunity revealed is gathered power. No such conditions can exist as descending into vice and its attendant suffering apart from vicious inclinations, or ascending into virtue and its pure happiness without the continued cultivation of virtuous aspiration. Therefore, as the Lord and Master of thought, we are the maker of ourselves, the shaper and author of our environment. Even at birth, the soul comes to his own, and through every step of his earthly pilgrimage, it attracts those combinations of conditions which reveal itself, which are the reflection of his own purity and impurity, his strength and weakness. 
We do not attract that which we want, but that which we are. Our whims, fancies, and ambitions are thwarted at every step, but our innermost thoughts and desires are fed with our own food, be it foul or clean. The divinity that shapes our ends is in ourselves. Look at that. The divinity that shapes our end is in ourselves. It is our own very self. We are manacled only by ourselves. Thought and action are the jailers of faith. The imprisoned being based, they also they are also the angels of freedom, the liberate, being noble. Not that we wish and pray for, not what we wish and pray for do we get, but what we justly earn. Not, not what we wish and pray for. You may be praying and wishing for something and your thinking is different from what you are praying and wishing for. What you are praying and wishing for is not what's going to come to pass, but what you are thinking. That's what we're talking about. So, prayer is overrated. Thinking is it. <laughs> you may be praying for this and thinking that it is not what you are praying for that will come to pass. Though. It's what you are thinking. It's what we are thinking. So, now, not what we wish and pray for do we get, but what we justly earn. Our wishes and prayers are gratified and answered only when we harmonize with our thoughts and action. Of course, action is a blossom of thought. You don't act without thinking. You know, many of our actions are, in fact, I believe more than inspired action. Because by your thinking, some things comes for you to six steps to do if our physical action is just a kind of a is the last step of creation is last of step, is the last a party is even 10 percent of creation our thought factor our thought factor takes a massive point of creation because thought physical action is just because you are a physical being to now go and take that but your thought will have taken that before your hand will go and take it because in this third dimension your thought can go and it needs a physical hand to go and do that. So, in the light of truth, what then is the meaning of fighting against circumstances? It means that we are continually revolving against an effect without, while all the time we are nourishing and preserving its cause in our heart. Can you see that? Let me take that again. He said, in the life of truth, what then is the meaning of fighting against circumstances? Well, it means that we are continually revolting an effect without. We are fighting an effect outside. We are fighting outside. We are saying, I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't want this doing that to me. I don't like what is happening. I don't like what is happening around me. I don't like what is happening around me. But look at it now. He said that why all the time we are nourishing and preserving his cause in our heart. We, should, we, have, we are forgetting that those things that we see we don't like outside. There are things that we created from inside. Those things that we say we don't like outside us, they are things that we are creating from inside. I'm talking from personal experience. Where my experience is notwithstanding, this is law. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, that is what is happening. So, now we are seeing that cause may take the form of a conscious vice or an unconscious weakness. But whatever it is, it stubbornly impedes the efforts of its possessor and hence call aloud for remedy. All of us are anxious to improve our circumstances, but are unwilling to improve ourselves. <laughs> everybody, everybody. We are anxious to improve our circumstances, but we are very, very reluctant to improve ourselves. And that's why we keep pointing the blaming finger, accusing finger at somebody else. That is, this one is the one that is causing this problem for me. This one is, but the real thing is that when you improve yourself, you won't point fingers. You understand that whatever things that you think that you don't like outside you is something that you have created inside you. So it is through improvement you look at that. And when you look at that, then you can be quiet, you can, you can, if you can want, okay, we now want to pray. God, help, help me to change. Help me to, help me not to be thinking this way. Then you are really serious. So, all of us are anxious to improve our circumstances, but are unwilling to improve ourselves. We therefore remain bound. People who do not shrink from self crucifixion can never fail to accomplish the object upon which their eyes are set. This is true of earthly as of heavenly things. 
Even those whose sole object is to acquire wealth must be prepared to make great personal sacrifices before they can accomplish this object. And how much more for, so for those who will realize a strong and well-poised life? For example, let's look at a man who is wretchedly poor. Is extremely anxious that his surroundings and home comfort should be improved. Yet, all of the time, he shakes his work and believes himself justified in trying to deceive his employer on the ground of the insufficiency of his wages. Such a man does not understand the simplest rudiments of these principles, which are the basis of true prosperity, and is not only totally unfitted to rise out of wretchedness, but is actually attracting to himself a still deeper wretchedness by dwelling in and acting out indolent, deceptive, and negative thoughts. Now, let's look at a rich woman who is the victim of a painful and persistent disease as a result of gluttony. She is unwilling to give large sum of money to get rid of it, but will not sacrifice her gluttonous desires. She wants to gratify her taste for rich and unnatural food and have her health as well. Such a woman is totally unfit to have air because she has not learned that the first principle of a healthy life. Another example is an employer of labor who adopts crooked measures to avoid paying the regulation wage and in the hope of making larger profits, call the wages of his employers. Such a man is altogether unfitted for prosperity and when he finds himself bankrupt, both as regards to reputation and riches, he blames circumstances not knowing that he is the sole author of his condition. I have introduced these three cases merely as illustrations of the truth that each person is the causer, each person is the causer, though nearly always unconsciously. That is where the problem is, you know. Each of us, we are the causer, though unconscious. That, that's why we try to put it out there, out there, it's out there. Is out there, is out there, is out there, you know. So it's out there, it's out there, it's out there, it's out there, you know. Please stop saying it's out there, start saying it's in here, it's in here. The more you say it's in here, it's in here, then you're able to look inward and begin to make changes in your life rapidly. So look at it this way, he said. Okay, where am I? Okay, he's saying that I have introduced these three cases merely as an illustration of the truth that each person is the causer, though nearly always unconsciously, of his or her circumstances, and that while perhaps aiming at a good end, that person is continually frustrating his accomplishment by encouraging thoughts and desires which cannot possibly harmonize with that end. Such cases could be multiplied and varied almost indefinitely. But this is not necessary, as you can trace the action of the loss of thought in your own mind and life. And until that, this is done, mere external facts cannot serve as a ground of reasoning. I'm not ready to do any, <laughs> I'm not going to invite anybody, I just want to read this book, explain it and go to sleep so if you are around and you just watch me and let's enjoy this book together this is, i'm reading as a man think it if you see the book buy it but still join me in reading this book because you're going to benefit from the discussion a lot i intend to after finishing this particular one i'm going to take another classic that have blessed my life and i'm going to have a role on this platform uh, all these uh, things that uh, tiktok is giving to me if i understand it i will play but for now, please just watch me and let us enjoy this great book together. Circumstances, however, are not are so complicated, thoughts so deeply rooted, and the conditions of happiness vary so vastly with individuals that a person's entire soul condition cannot be judged by another from the external aspect of his or her life alone. A person may be honest in certain direction, yet suffer privations. Another may be dishonest in certain direction, yet acquire wealth. The usual conclusion, however, is that one person fails because of his or her particular honesty, and that the other prosper because of the person's particular dishonesty. This is the result of a superficial judgment, which assumes that the dishonest person is almost totally corrupt, and the honest one almost entirely virtuous. 
In the light of a deeper knowledge and wider experience, such judgment is found to be erroneous. The dishonest person may have some admirable virtues which the other does not possess, and the honest person obnoxious vices which are absent in the other. The honest person reaps the good result of his honest thoughts and acts, but also is the cause of his sufferings which each of our vices produce. This dishonest person likewise garners suffering and happiness. Look at this way, what, is trying, what is the author is trying to tell us here is that, you know, that you are, you seem to be successful in this area. You know, when people see you externally and say, oh, this person is successful in this area, this area. It's a mirror of the condition of the mind of that person in that area. Okay, and this person, Oh, this person is so crooked, he's so crooked, uh, and why is he successful in this area? Well, that person that you think that is not, is so crooked, that is a wicked person, he looks like he's such in this area, is also a mirror of the internal condition of that person in that area. So, look at it that life is departmentalized. So, there's a, a particular area, the, the, the result of your thinking is what you are getting outside you, in any particular area of life. So, Nobody is say I'm totally complete. So you may be you may be getting it in this point, but you look at the area where you're not getting it, and now begin to judge and say, oh, that person getting it, even though he doesn't look as if he's a virtuous person and uh, virtuous than that person and is getting it right that person, and so how ah, can it be like that? But look, we are being made to understand that this is a law. This is a law. That person that seems to be getting it right in that area, we are not getting it right. It's a mirror of what is getting right inside him. It's just a mirror. Everything we see on the outside is a mirror of what is on the inside. If you can get that point correctly, it summarizes this book. What you are seeing on the outside is a mirror of the inside. I cannot say it enough. And until you are able to accept that in your life, you continue to suffer. You continue to suffer. That what you see on the outside is not traceable to anybody on the outside. But inside you, it could be there consciously or unconsciously. So if it's there consciously, do something consciously. If it's not, it's there unconsciously. Then begin to. That's when you talk about prayer now. Say, Lord, there's some things I'm seeing in my life outside me, and I don't know how this thing is coming. I know that because I know it's a law. It cannot appear outside me if it's not inside me. Oh Lord, help me to remove this thing. Why am I getting this is outside me? It's a mirror of what is out inside me. Though I don't know, I cannot be thinking this consciously now. I cannot be wishing myself this bad thing outside me. But it means that unconsciously, I'm wishing myself this thing out, that I'm seeing outside. So let, let me look for a way to correct this thing, this unconscious that is running in my, in, this tape that is running inside me, that is producing this music outside me. Let me find a way to stop this tape. That is the, look, that is the business of living. The, 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 the level to which you are committed to this concept is the level to which you live a happy life. Nothing makes a man happy to know that, look, there is nobody out there. Everybody is inside here, creating what is outside there. So until we begin to own up this, take responsibility, take responsibility for your life. That's what I'm talking about, take responsibility for your life. Don't worry about, uh, uh, don't, be, don't worry about being fast, but uh, you want to hurry, 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 hurry. Yes, don't hurry, don't hurry as yourself. Just understand the concept and be gentle with yourself and work with it. Work, if you are tenacious and if you are, if you are not playing games, you are authentic and you are playing game and you are looking at this concept and looking at it, even though around do people may criticize you, may say, oh man, oh man, I was in the but you know that this is the way things are happening. Even those things of criticism outside do is all part, all part of the game. There are something inside you that is producing those characteristics outside you. Then you can always go back in your quiet time and say, Lord, I want to control this thing. I want to take charge of my own personal life because there is no enemy out there. The enemy is, look at what Jesus Christ said. He said, the, he said, he said the, the, a man's enemy is of his own household. Many people think that is an external household. It's, talk, it's about yourself that is inside you. Your enemy is inside you. Your enemy is inside you. Your enemy is inside you. And it's not, it's not unlinked. It's linked directly with your thought life. Conscious thought or conscious thought. They are the one producing the activities in your life. 
Those that are conscious that you know, find a way to stop it. They are the ones that are unconscious. That is when you now begin to look, I want to know this. What are the things that is manifesting this thing I'm seeing outside me? I want to see them. Wow, sometimes you are sleeping, you are dreaming, those things will be revealed to you. And you find a way to stop them. That's the magic of living. That's the magic of living. That your destiny is your own art. That you can live a predictive life. That you can live a predictive life. You can predict your life. That nobody can just come and say he's a prophet and begin to speak nonsense in your life. You tell him, no, come on, take, stop. Stop. I know how this thing comes. I'm going to sit with myself. And like I say that, look, one of the greatest things you can understand in life is that there's a, there's a particular phrase in the scripture that says that be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Be still. In the moment of your stillness, that quietness, you come back to yourself. Look at the, the story of the prodigal son. When he came back to himself, he came back to himself. He reasoned himself out of that condition. He came back to himself. You have to come back to yourself every day. Every day. If one of the greatest habits you can develop in life is to come back to yourself every day and look inward. Look inward. Everything out, outward there is a mirror of what is inward here. Is a mirror of what is inward here. If you take this simple concept, this simple concept, just go to the look. I love mirror a lot. Mirror. Just put a mirror in your house. Look at it like this. Everything you are seeing on that mirror, you are seeing that mirror. It's taking you that look. You are the one who, <laughs> whatever you are presenting before the mirror, is what the mirror will take back to you. So everything that we see on the outside is a mirror of what is on the inside. As above, so below. As within, so without. That's the concept of this book, as a man think it. As a man think it. So, now, let me go on and see whether we can take uh, some part before I, I round up. So, we are saying here that uh, uh, it is pleasing to human vanity to behave that people suffer because of their virtues, but not until every sickly, bit, biter, bitter and impure thought has been extirpated from their mind. And every sinful stain washed from their souls, can they be in a position to know and declare that the sufferings are the result of their good and not of their bad qualities? On the way to, yet long before that supreme perfection has been reached, such people will have experienced the great law, which is absolutely just, and which cannot therefore give good for evil or evil for good. This law we are talking about does not give does not give uh, good for evil or evil for good. This law is just. It's just. So, now, possessed of such knowledge, they would then know, looking back upon their past ignorance and blindness, that each of their life is and always was justly or that, and that all their past experiences, good and bad, were the equitable outworking of this evolving yet unevolved self. Good thoughts and actions can never produce bad results. Can never good thoughts and action can never produce bad results. Bad thoughts and action can never produce good results. <laughs> it's a law. So this is but saying that nothing can come from corn, but corn. I was about to say that nothing can come from corn, but corn. Nothing from natus but natus. We understand this law in the natural world and work with it. The few understand it in the mental and mortal world. Though its operation there is just as simple and undeviating, and they, they therefore do not cooperate with it. Suffering is always the effect of wrong thought in some directions. It is an indication. Look at this. I, I love this statement. Let me take it again. Suffering is always, not one of the time, it's always. Suffering is always the effect of wrong thought in some direction. <laughs> I hope I will. I'm going to read a book also that changed my life. The Power of Decision. I'm going to read. I'm going to stay on that book also with my audience. You know, I'm going to read. I'm. I, I, I'm going to. Look, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I intend to come back again and again to do on this live show and just do book reading, uh, so that uh, uh, you know we can. It, it says that suffering 
look at this. He says suffering is unintelligent action in an intelligent universe. <laughs> it changed my life. That every suffering is an unintelligent action you take in an intelligent universe. So when you take an unintelligent action or unintelligent thinking in an intelligent universe is equal to suffering. So look at this one. It says, it says suffering is always the effect of wrong thought in some direction. It is an indication that we are of harmony with ourselves, with the law of life. The sole and supreme use of suffering is to purify, to burn out all that is useless and pure. Suffering ceases for those who are pure. There could be no object in burning gold after the dross has been removed. Yes. And a perfectly pure and enlightened being could not suffer. I think I'm going to end it at this point. Don't forget, the concept of this book is that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, as within, so without. As above, so below. Whatever you are seeing on the outside of you is a mirror of the thing you are, that is on the inside of you. Whatever you are thinking, consciously or unconsciously, don't forget, you are going to reap it outside you. Every thought you think is karmic in nature. It's karmic. That is, it's a seed you are sowing. And that is why you have to be conscious of, you have to live a, a conscious life. One of the best ways to enjoy this life is to live a conscious life. A conscious life. You are living consciously. You are not just living unconsciously. You are not just leave yourself to chance. Anything that will be, will be. No. You want to travel, you already establish a, a course. I want to travel, you see yourself arriving before you even travel. By virtue of what you are thinking now, you can, you can say, oh, well, what I'm thinking now, I look at what I'm thinking now, I put them down, and if this has supposed to be seed, I can be sure that if I continue to think this way, I'm going to have this, this thought tomorrow. So that, that, that is why it's not good for all those systems we are beginning to judge and say, ah, but this person was, you know what he was thinking? A lot of us, we are so particular about what we are, what we wear every day, what we wear every day. We are so particular what we put to our mouth every day. Uh, diet, I'm dieting. Oh, I'm looking at my wardrobe, I'm dressing. But we are not particular about what we are thinking. If you are particular about what you are eating and what you are wearing, and you are not particular about what you are thinking, my brother, you are wasting your time. <laughs> you are wasting your time. Because what you are thinking, I won't prefer, I prefer that you are, you are more aware of what you are thinking than to be aware of what you are eating or what you are. Because thinking influences everything. You know that thinking has, your body is a puppet to your thought, your thought life. Your body is a puppet to your thought life. Your body is a puppet to your mind. So what you are thinking is more important than what you are wearing or what you are eating. And that's why dieting does not work. Because if you are, you are, you are dieting this and you are thinking something different, your body will not follow your diet, you follow your thinking. So thinking, thinking, and thinking, thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking. I cannot emphasize this enough. Begin to get busy with your thought life. Wake up every morning, sit down, even with these five minutes, think. Consciously think some things that are beneficial into your life. As you are thinking, you are planting. So why don't you think good things that we are planting that will bring more food tomorrow? Don't just, don't live life to chance and believe that somebody is out there that is going to help you. So look, I got a quote sometimes, sometimes I, I, every time I look at it, I look at, I wrote it, I've written that quote down many times. Let me, let me share with you. He said, he said, no one can deny you or grant you anything in this life. No one can deny you or grant you anything in this life. No one can deny you or grant you anything in this life. Everything you have comes to you by your own vibration. 
everything you have in life comes to you by your own vibration. And what is vibration? Vibration is what you are thinking and what you are feeling every moment of your life. You can't be thinking wrong and getting it right. You can't be feeling wrong and getting it right. Your thinking and your feeling, they are your greatest prayers. They are your greatest prayers. They are your greatest prayers. They are the equipment given to you by God to fashion your destiny. Your thinking and feeling. Your thinking and feeling. Your thinking and feeling. Your thinking and feeling. Don't forget that. Your thinking and feeling, they are the greatest equipment given to you by God to make your own life. To carve out your own destiny. So don't, 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 don't play religion. Don't play religion. You know, we have played religion. I have played religion. But until <coughs> my eyes got open. <laughs> I'm a very happy man. Because I understand now that I just need to take care of what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Thinking, feeling. Thinking, feeling. Thinking, feeling. Thinking, feeling. That's how I bring things to my life. That's how I create a wondrous life. That's how I create paradise on this earth. That's how I enjoy God. Thinking and feeling. Thinking and feeling. Well, till I see you again, let me stand out here. Uh, I hope you share the snippet of this life. Uh, till I come again, I hope to come maybe once or twice a week or whatever. You know, I wish I had more time. But I have a lot of books that I'm going to discuss on this platform. After I finish this one, I'm going to the power of decision. I'm going to I'm going to look at uh, uh, the science of getting rich. I'm going to look at uh, you know some classical books that you can't find around on around the place. But beautiful books. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Bye for now. All right. So where do we stop this now? <laughs>